But if, if anyone has got a question, you can just ask me before I tackle the second slide, starting going to the details. Okay, Santa. Well, well, as I've explained, um, uh, the definition of the, uh, the the continuing professional development. As I said, this is not just a concept. This is actually a checkpoint. This is actually a program in which every single professional in the world not to and can tackle it. You can do it even self yourself. You can get involved by your academic. Uh, so whatever as I said, it could be a self bed program uh, where you just really kind of drop down uh, all your areas of improvement and you can start the CPD. Today we are going to see other um, besides the mission, the CPD aspects, what are the five elements of payments of the CPD, as well as many topics, addition to a demo, a demonstration on how we can start a continuing professional development plan and at the same time how we can record our tracks and how we can record our learning progress uh, along with this uh, program. Well, as you see here, we've got um, kind of eight CPD aspects. So the professional development has got aspects and it differs, as I said, from one sector to another, particularly talking about the CPD in teaching. Uh, uh, one of the most uh, important of um, a novice teacher, particularly starts with, is mentoring in peer observation. Uh, well, I, I'm sure that you know the mentoring, uh, generally talking about, let's say, business communities. Mentoring is something very sacred. But when it comes to teaching, it is actually the process of uh, mutual growth. You work and mentor, so you engage in cycles of um, active learning. That results in the enhancement of, um, for example, the practice and the empowerment of those involved elements, which means that it's uh, something you could do uh, not only yourself, but you can do with one of your colleagues, you can do with one of your friends, one of your colleagues, uh, with your head teacher, with your teacher trainer, and so on. So mentoring is, is like um, a guide on the side, and it is not a sage on the stage. It's absolutely a guide on the side that leads the teacher, that leads the professional into learning new knowledge, into making a new collection of that engagement, that active learning in terms of, let's say, included in, in a cycle. And uh, along with, let's say, mutual profits between the mentee and the mentor in order to make those ways to change them and to build self-esteem and self-confidence uh, and enriching that already existing knowledge a teacher has got. This works together with the peer observation, as you see here. Uh, the peer observations are very much used with novice teachers uh, when, for example, you see and learn more from experienced teachers. It means that you get a shadowing and already experienced teacher um, in, in his or in her class, uh, watching out the activities she or he's doing, uh, making sure that you take notes, you take records about the activities that are and at the same time, uh, it gives a more objective view on the performance, on the general performance of every single professional, of every single teacher. Uh, this means that you can see how you make how the second part is dealing with some issues in different way. Uh, the other ones you know already. And at the same time, you're going to discover new and effective strategies and you discuss those problems and concerns you've already got in mind before you get to that place you will kind of as i said develop a very um uh, maintaining self-awareness of one's own teaching particularly if you're a novice teacher you really need the experience you need the expertise you need the advice you need the mentorship uh, of the second side of the teacher, um, an experienced teacher before I go to the, to the other aspects, I, I would like really to ask you a few um, how ask questions, ask about mentoring and peer observation and their relation about continuing professional development.
Okay, I take it as an L2. Then, as I said, uh, pure observation, pure coaching um, are kind of very much the same. The only difference is that the, uh, the coaching should be more structured, more uh, kind of into support the leadership of the development of your learning, uh, which means that you should already be enrolled in a particular um, CPD program that is going to undertake you to improve special skills that this is going to define for you. Uh, so one of the most successful uh, paths I advise every single teacher and even your professional in taking and considering uh, being enrolled into any CPD, make sure that at least this year of a person, you've got a party, you've got a mate who's going to advise you, who's going to be your mentor. And if you ever find a coach, that is absolutely your life opportunity to hit with you because that is the coach, that is the person, that is the mentor, that is the teacher who's going to um, guide you, who's going to find and decide what skills are going to be developed, what are the notions, what are the experts you need actually to put into my into your uh, PCPD. Um, yes, it could be free, it could be a friend, it could be self-fed, it really depends on your situation, it depends uh, on the organization you work for. Again, so when it comes to um, number number four, action plan, uh, so before you enroll to any activity that is going to enhance take your knowledge or your skill, you should set an improvement area. So, for example, I am a teacher, supposing that I am a primary school teacher and I would like to enter the CPD program. Uh, so, before I enter to that CPD program, I have to set areas where I think I am weak and I need to develop. I have to put kind of a before I get enrolled to that program. In the case that you did not get a, a, a learning plan, you do not get action plan or track you are going to follow, uh, you may fall into kind of a confusion, you might be misled, you might be developing skills which are already mature uh, into your career, into your collections, then you could actually really get losing so much of your time, so much of your experience. Yeah, so um, action plan is also a very common area we need to uh, considered before accessing to any CPD enrollment program. Then you get to research and writing. Um, these are very much academic, which means that um, it's uh, it's okay to go and, and do a CPD program just by researching, by googling, by going through some um, data, some online portfolios, which is whether it could be an academic paper. Whatever you're going to do as a search is very much considered as a continuing professional development in case you consider it and you put an area on a focus on it as one of the areas you need to improve in a particular skill or in a particular book. Along with the uh, link, which means that you are actually taking profit of your search and putting it into practice by writing, for example, field notes, you're writing blogs on it. Internet, you're writing journals and you publish them to some um, kind of cyber uh, uh, notions online. You write portfolios for your class, you write portfolios for your inspector, for your um, mentees if you've got only the mentees, or for your colleague at school. Maybe. And next on another aspect which is very well known, and literally today is, is one of the um, online events we are actually organizing, which is uh, number nine. Uh, it is part of the a CPD, uh, which is actually has been launched by um, kind of different, not only myself, just an idea really to support the um, which teaching in Algeria particularly. So today's today's topic is part really of a great great uh, CPD program we're really uh, tending to launch in the very uh, future, particularly if things really go well, and um, this is where particularly improves when it comes to this um, COVID-19 at White Health Scott. Yeah, so these are some of the aspects um, about the CPD. Any one of you has a question about these aspects, please?
from asking again, anyone has got a question about any aspects I've already mentioned, or if you have got already some of us you experienced it before joining our webinar. Okay, um, uh, this is Eptisam again. I just wanted to mention a point about the P observation. That is something that I should, I mean, both the teachers or um, who are um, doing the job should be present in the same place. But um, it can be, I, I may call it a distant observation. It's the thing that I'm doing, uh, Zineb and me. So we are sharing things. We. Uh, through Colin, uh, so just I call her on phone and we share our experience and we share, I mean, I, I can even share with her the film of the class and we share some points and discuss them also. So we learn from each other, even if we are um, far from each other. Uh, I would ask her to confirm what I'm saying. Zineb, can you confirm, please? Yes, uh, sorry, the voice is not that clear. Yes, I do confirm that uh, me and Eftis Sam always uh, having a kind of uh, exchanging ideas and uh, take the uh, opinion of each other, assess each other's work and practices. And I think it is uh, really working even uh, via uh, online and uh, distance uh, coaching. It's like a peer coaching or peer observation, as you want to say. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Zainid, for your confirmation. Um, um, uh, it seems that no one of the other participants has got something to add. I'd like to go to these um, five elements and see, see uh, some of the best ways really you need to work with in terms of uh, you get enrolled to any CPD program. Uh, as you see, they are all in train, they are all one continues the other, one supports the other, one completes the other. Sports plan, do you record, reflect and submit. Uh, but what does a single um, uh, word of those uh, mean? Someone is not in mute and I'm guessing a Nico. Okay, I just put you on mute, I'm sorry. Okay, you are. Okay, as I said, um, yes, so these are kind of key elements and key keys uh, a teacher needs really to um, think of once you are enrolled to a continue, uh, professional development. Uh, well, let me just precise that continuing professional development should not be very official, should not be very academic, something with money, should not be something done with, with a kind of a very recognized uh, international worldwide uh, uh, institution, kind of those big universities, fashion academies, and oh, it's absolutely very simple, something very simplified and tidy that you uh, as, a teacher, as a student um, uh, can do without spending any pence of money, without spending uh, much time, without traveling, without moving from your place home. So uh, the first element, I'll go quickly through them. Uh, it, it, Sexually, when it comes to planning, you need to uh, take yourself, to ask yourself uh, the following question. What, what do I want to achieve? So I, I need to make a plan, actually. What do I want to achieve? Or you ask yourself, um, what do I need to learn exactly? What's I ask another question. So how will I learn? Learn it. So, okay, supposing I know what I'm going to learn, I need also to plan what I am going to learn. So, supposing that I need to find some resources, I need to define some skills that are going to be uh, kind of uh, enriching, that are going to undertake uh, the improvement of my skills and my work. So, this is actually for planning. When it comes to doing, uh, doing actually is that this is after the, the planification. And after you finish, uh, it's time to get out and start the development of that CPD process. Uh, it's a little bit uh, of a, um, hard, so you need really to think of reflecting uh, on the go, reflecting easy things, reflecting on the most practical things in 
you need to do uh, for your activities, which require some time management skills, which require motivation. Uh, and also activities for valuable return uh, as it keeps you connected to the wider uh, food science community. It keeps you connected to the wider uh, knowledge and network in international um, academic and, and teaching. Uh, yes, uh, so here we're in the phase on doing, uh, kind of your applying. You're actually learning. You started uh, the process of accessing your resources, uh, uh, then accessing the activities, then choosing what is really beneficial and what is not. I guess I'll let's record in here. Uh, okay, I, I don't want to talk about you now, but I would like to ask any one of the participants, uh, except uh, my moderator, uh, APSM, and my colleague, Zinep, not to answer. What does record mean here? Uh, talking about CPD in general, uh, what does the word record uh, mean to you when you see in this concept or in this tag of um, CPD, please? Hello, this is Saliha. Do you hear Hi, me? Saliha, go ahead, please. No. I think recording... I do. I confirm. Yeah. Go ahead. All right. I think recording here means after you uh, you set in your plan on the field, and then you are doing things, you are applying some strategies, methods, activities, and so on. You are doing some, I mean, observations on what has gone right what has gone wrong and so on so you are recording this you can say feedback or information about what you applied in order to later on reflect upon it and make a, i mean you amend or you you remove something or you add something you make changes so i think this is it thank you Thanks, Saleha. It's exactly that one. Uh, when it comes to recording, it's it's the fact of or the act of recording. It's down and taking notes and setting uh, some takes and axes uh, about the learning progress against the plan. So you need to compare the plan you have set at the very beginning here and your learning progress. Did you, uh, are you actually going on the right way? Are you actually managing your time well? Um, uh, did you succeed in some activities? Uh, did you find something you already knew before? Uh, and things? So it's uh, it's kind of uh, uh, including the recording items that may not have planned before, such as training, for example, or learning experience, particularly something very new. And at the same time, as I have said before, CPD is all about quality of the learning. So it's not just go to learn, but it's all about having a learning with a high quality and a quantity. So I'd rather go for one or two activities, a very huge benefits from that, rather than to 20 activities, but I absolutely don't understand a clue out of that. Yeah, and recording um, can be done, as I said before, uh, you can even write uh, with a pen and a paper. Uh, you can write uh, on your skis, for example, on your notebook, on your, on your computer, on your phone. Um, whatever. For, for example, I myself sometimes open my Facebook um, Messenger and I just start sending messages to myself. So if I would like really to record something very quickly and I don't have the time to go to my notes, to go to my trackers, um, I just wait. So it's it's very important. But as I said before, things two things to make sure that you compare the progress against the plan you have set before. Then the second thing is to focus on quality rather than quantity. Lovely. Then um, I go to reflection, reflect. So here is the most critical part, is the most critical element of the CPD recording. So right after you record your information, you need to make sure you are thinking of a value that makes your work really getting back to you, making uh, the knowledge you've, um, you've, you've acquired, the knowledge you've learned is going to be useful for yourself, for your colleagues, for your students, for your customers, 
for your company, uh, whatever. So it means that your CPD is going to become uh, beneficial and meaningful for everyone who is around you. It's not only you're going to learn something, then you keep it for yourself. All the time reason behind our learning. Um, I have to ask so, okay, I, I, I play, I and I'm just going to learn about all this. Um, how have I learned? Was I very um, um, kind of active? Uh, was I uh, active? Was I reactive? Um, uh, did I monitor? Did I apply into practice very, uh, uh, very much of my knowledge? Uh, what is the resulting? So, did I change something? Did I improve some of my selections? So, these are some of the questions you need really to reflect. It's the same as if you go to um, a training uh, with, let's say, particularly practical training or workshop with your head teacher, head master, inspector. Then you get out later on in the afternoon and then you ask one of your colleagues, what did we learn today? Uh, or did we apply this and that we already knew before? Or um, kind of uh, what did we kind of put into practice out of our knowledge collection? So it's it's really uh, the fact of putting the hands of the value and giving the learning kind of a very um, large and a very big bridge between what you have learned, uh, but when, uh, between what, what you have learned at the very moment and what you already had known before. Then um, it comes to the last part, which is the submission. Um, you are not a um, kind of a CPD scheme. We are not CPD masters. Uh, same for me, it applies for me. I all the time go through the CPDs, but I need to go uh, through to understand the operation phases. As I said, if you are part of any CPD scheme or any CPD program, uh, you must be prepared to send your report. So, for example, I personally do it. Whenever I give a continuing professional development, I need to prepare kind of an academic paper or a report that I need to send, especially when I am doing a um, CPD related to my organization. It means that my boss is enrolling a CPD. So after the CPD um, enhancement uh, is done or is over, I just need to prepare a report and I submit it. But if you're doing a uh, self bad CPD just to enrich or to uh, improve yourself, you absolutely need a report. It really depends on the situation, depends on uh, how well you would like to make an end to your uh, continuing professional development. At this very moment, I'm, I'm absolutely out with this slide here. I would like to for seconds or minutes to the audience. If you've got any question, please. Hello, everybody. This is Jalal. Uh, just uh, I have a question uh, about the Aisham, it's about the eighth aspect of CPD, which is research. Just now, like an idea just popped up into my mind. It's regarding the references. Uh, we can see that there are like endless references and uh, knowledge available in the internet. But the question is, what reliable references we should be always relying on? Because with this huge uh, amount of uh, information that we can find in the internet and uh, that everybody is trying to prove that his method and his content is the best. So like what guidelines like we could follow like in choosing like the exact references and the, like the best approaches that we have to acquire and put them into practice in our like uh, daily uh, teaching and learning process. Thank you. I love the question, Jalan. Uh, first of all, thank you so much. I would like to thank you particularly to have taken the time of, of joining me. Uh, to, uh, well, I'll, I'll answer two questions in, in, uh, uh, let's say in, in once. So when it comes to uh, the criteria of determining whether a source uh, or resource is um, reliable or not, it all depends on two um, uh, or three elements. The first element is accuracy. Uh, for me, 
uh, it's very important uh, to verify any information against the information I found. So if I'm, I'm seeking information about a particular paradigmatics uh, in, in linguistics, I should all the time get the latest information I have. Uh, this is one of the things. So it's accuracy. The second thing is that the authority. Uh, you need to make sure that the source is written by a trustworthy author or an institution. Uh, for example, when it comes to um, www.cmdb.com, but if you find something like dot, uh, I don't know, Weebly.com or these, which are very uh, uh, most of the time free resources or free um, created websites, it's it's a little bit. I don't want to say it's not something that we can trust, but it's most of the time. It's hard to believe the origin is. Uh, but at the same time, I advise really that every one of us seeks on the internet and, and searches about what are kind of the most um, um, GDPR uh, measured sites. For example, websites which are ending by .dz, for Algeria, .cz by Czech Republic, .com, .org for organizations. And, and things like this. So it's something we need to learn. It's something we need to ask about most of the times. Then uh, the section, I would, I would support your question, Jalawi, for the answer. How can I find credible resources for my research? Uh, the first thing is that uh, we need to avoid Wikipedia because Wikipedia is kind of information that gathers information from everywhere. It does not really uh, rely on uh, a trustable resource or no trustable resource. The second thing is that you need to use the online scholarly databases, uh, such as InfoTrax, Info for example, Lennox and EBSL University links, uh, particularly when I say university links. So these universities, which are um, uh, official organizations, which are working on a particular domain or community, uh, for example, ELT, for example, TESOL, uh, and inside those websites, you can find um, links to external resources, but which are tribal, which are reliable, and then you can use, even though the web that is something for free, is created by individual, is created by um, a dummy user, for example. Then the last two things I would like to add is that searching in libraries, we do have very trustful online libraries, which are supported by in the international government of uh, international organization of uh, accumulated uh, libraries and the newspapers. And so I'm, I'm sorry, I can't really go into very much details, but I'm, I've tried really to say um, how at least like uh, in, in a brief way, to find reliable resources and how we can be that our resource is reliable or not. But if you want, absolutely, we can discuss this offline after the webinar uh, and I can show more, let's say, details and more information uh, with, let's say, practical side IVs for you and for everyone, certainly. Jala, are you there? Yes, yes, Tisham. Thank you so much. I would love to, definitely. I would absolutely, love to. absolutely. Thank you for your question. And the um, the second uh, part of CPD uh, is the stages. Uh, this is actually something we, we might have already discussed in the same hidden way in our first slide. Uh, reflection, then planning, then action, then evaluation. It's it's very similar uh, to these actually five elements, but this is actually uh, already in the uh, application phase. So we ended by the reflection. It means that you get identification links between your development activities and the impact that is going to cause your knowledge collection into a new undertaking wave. And later on, uh, the indication or the planning, as we call it, which means that setting already a plan that is going to develop your needs, uh, not a plan that is just going to satisfy um, kind of uh, filling a gap on your application or filling some hands out over your papers that you are by an academy. The later on uh, action or application. So here is the source of the element. So how have you 
um, apply learning. So, okay, you learned something, you've taken the benefits out of it, but this really, make, uh, did this really make a kind of a difference into the application process? So I learned how to teach. So, okay, and did my teaching improve? Okay, did my students start to understand me more than I used to be explaining to them? Kind of these questions we really need to put as a, as a single aspect of our personal practice, particularly. And later on, the evaluation here, we need, set, uh, we need to be fair here. We need to be fair, we need to be uh, loyal even to ourselves, loyal to the language we are learning or to the knowledge we are getting enhanced by. Uh, uh, did I really meet my learning needs? So I need to ask myself, really, I've gone through a CPD for 10 days, for 20 days, but did I really learn something? Uh, okay, was that plan I have set in the very beginning where the elements have already written in, uh, made and achieved? Now, I need to ask the question, I need to answer. So how has your practice changed um, as, as a result of learning? So this is one of the things you need to evaluate yourself about. If what you learn is going to make a difference into practicing your cycle, into practicing your knowledge, into practicing, for example, I'm talking about teaching, uh, let's not go very far. If you think, think that there was not a change, if you think that it was, uh, you're still unsure, I advise you to revise the plan and you just compare it against the criteria and against the action of taking to see whether really you are doing a, 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 a meaningful work and you're actually doing an original uh, learning needs a mitigation process, or let's say remediation process for your uh, knowledge. This is just a brief about the stages uh, since we discussed about them before. Uh, does anyone of you have a question about stages of CPD or the five most elements important in CPD processes? Okay, I say no, and I move to the next slide. So, um, uh, um, we are going, uh, not, we are not certainly going to discuss every single type, but as you see, uh, the CPD is not uh, one thing, is not one type, is not one model. It, it's, uh, it's not, and hundreds, if I may say, thousands of models that depends on the job you are doing. Uh, but we mostly rely on the um, academic qualification or new role existing, uh, existing role or new role, and also the qualification um, and professional, which means that we do the CPD in order to get promoted, we do the CPD in order to get a better job, uh, in order to be kind of an academic uh, um, um, inspector or a head teacher, a teacher trainer, or so on. So I will go briefly to explain uh, qualification, academic, and a uh, new role, existing role, as well as the professional CPD. To the academic, we all know it since uh, most of graduated from uh, I, I, one of our universities. Uh, it's, it's a formal qualification which you are going to be awarded by your establishment particularly after the exam, after a CPD you go through, you get a bachelor's degree, you get a post-bachelor's degree, you get an international diploma, you get, a, I don't know, an associate degree. So every single thing that you get to do for the academics, it's not going to do anything with uh, um, uh, professional, anything with uh, jobs, with doing things and putting it in the terrain normally. Then uh, th this one is, uh, as you said, uh, it's, it's very typically extended. And then it's got a simple, uh, simple defined time for it. Uh, but later on, about professional qualification, it means after you graduated from the university, you started working, you need to get a recognized qualification. For example, 
um, you would like to get a TASOL certificate, you would like TASOL, CELTA, DELTA, I, I, I CPTS and CTS and these are your qualifications just in order to be more qualified to be in a way certified in what you're going to do. So every single certification or every single qualification you would like to do just for the sake of applying it to your professional uh, profession to your profession, uh, you need to go through a CPD. Uh, even though you just say, oh, this is a learning, this is actual learning, yes. But at the same time, from a business perspective, from a learning perspective, this is considered as a CPD, even though through stages, through semesters, um, through, through aspects and models. But it is considered as a continuing professional development program that you need to get. You need to make sure that you get over until you get that specific qualification. The same for teachers. Uh, if you want to get a new role as a teacher, Sure. Uh, in Algeria, I know that you get, um, um, once you finish university studies, you can apply for um, the contest, the international contest of teachers. So you, you need to get through uh, some stages. Then later on, before you go to start teaching, you need to go to that teacher training model, which is very typical in Algeria, where your inspectors are going to teach you. So that 15 days trial period, that 15 days learning period, is good as a CPD, even though your country, even though the institution does not name it as a CPD, but from the learning perspective, as I said, it is considered as a continuing professional development. In addition to many, many, many models like private uh, conference events, for example, if you would like to be a, a, an international recognized speaker, let's say a whole things like this, delivery when it comes to business, uh, um, working with the customers, working with the uh, uh, checkpoint success management and so on. Networking searches, this is most of the times when it gets to um, uh, over putting the academic uh, field into some new experience, into some new change. And the informal trainings, um, what you do with your friends, what you do on Messenger, what you do on Facebook, do with um, uh, something like we are doing at this very moment. So I, I, I'm giving an online webinar. You don't know me. You, you are not part of my organization. I am not part of your organization. I am not even in your country. So this is something of, of an, an info training, uh, which means that sharing the knowledge between each other, uh, despite the distance, despite the restrictions, the legal restrictions. So it's just a brief um, explanation about the types of uh, CPD. You can also Google them and you can find them. Uh, but if you are a teacher, in most of the times so you apply for new role, existing role, academic or qualification and professional CPD, which means that so that you get upgraded, you get a new, um, gets a promotion for your job and, and things similar like this. Any questions, please? If you've got any question, guys, feel free to ask, feel free to um, write it even on the chat in case you don't want to speak it out. Well, I want to add something uh, in terms of uh, qualification uh, in the case here in Algeria. Uh, in addition to the uh, 15 days of a kind of professional development, uh, uh, let's say, training that you talked about, there is a kind of a professional development contest that teachers have a kind of uh, a training for a few days. Uh, and uh, after a particular time of teaching, of years of experiences, then they pass an exam to get to another level. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Zainab. Um, yeah, that's very much a country, a country detail. I don't know, but thank you for letting me know about that. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, I don't know if anyone else has got a question. 
But you see, um, I've prepared a plan for you. So if it's a very professional development plan for teachers. Uh, I, I know that most of you have come with the question, OK, so how can I do my plan to CP? This is kind of a simulation between my, my, myself and my uh, one of my colleagues. I, uh, I, uh, uh, I've just written it something like this, um, for sake of uh, uh, making it uh, Python and, and so on. Uh, so my friend is asking me how I'm thinking to go through some professional development, but I don't know how to start. Can you help me? So me, as um, an expert teacher saying, uh, I said, of course. So here's one of the plans I worked with during my very first CPD teaching mastery teaching skills uh, back in 2015s and 16s. So altogether, we can see a plan of how does a CPD plan look like. Uh, this is just a simulation. As, as I said, this is nothing real. This is really for you as well to see um, uh, how it looks like, what is the plan, what you need to include into it. So I give 30 seconds to watch it out and spot some elements if you would like. Then we can carry on the discussion. Okay, um, thank you. Well, as you see, this, this is a, 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 a professional plan for a teacher uh, in which there are five key elements, as you see them on green here. So what are your specific goals here? You need to write out what you need. To... Then the second thing, what key skills are needed for each goal? So what do I need in order to achieve my goal? And later on, so what skills do, do I need to develop? So he wants to be uh, to become a subject head teacher. Then I need to find some skills I need to develop. For example, expertise in my knowledge, leadership. So I want to be a teacher at, at I don't know a five hundred student school. Uh, another thing: what actions are you going to take? So if you would like to uh, involve yourself in expertise of knowledge and new skills. So what are you going to do? What are you going to take as action? This is kind of an action plan. You're going to write down what you need to do. And later on, the target dates for program review and completion. Uh, supposing that uh, you are, you see, the, the review date is March 2016. Supposing that we are in uh, January 2015, 2016, sorry. Uh, I give two months review. It means I need to start working on all of these four elements for two months. Then later on, on March uh, uh, 2016, kind of later, I would come to my plan and see my progress. Okay. Uh, and by follow the goals or did I get these skills or do I really think that I still have these skills in order to achieve my goals? Okay, then I come. I wanted to have some uh, expertise in the knowledge of English language teaching. Did I? So, in question, did you really meet this uh, uh, skill or did you really work for it? Do you think that you are still able to do it? And at the same time, you need to track. So, he, here we are talking about tracking. Did I really follow these two actions? If you ever think that you did not follow one of your actions here, it's more likely that you wouldn't succeed in becoming a subject head teacher and at the same time you wouldn't be able to develop these skills. So this is just a plan. I, I think that you've got enough time to watch it over. It's the same thing you like to make the most of technology used in your class. Uh, if you want to use kind of a, a educational technology so you have some uh, skills that you need to already have. You need the skills that you need to develop. You already can kind of uh, 
uh, draw the skills which are needed to be able to use a technological class. Then at the same time, you track your actions one, one two, three. Later on, you have the review and you have the completion. The difference between review and completion uh, is that uh, a review, you just can't see the progress. How are you doing? Are you really stick to um, achieve by the end of uh, 2016, for example? Are you really tracking your actions? Are you in a progress or not? And the completion means that, uh, in, for example, here in 2016, I would be able to participate in the context in the of becoming a subject. So this is also, uh, just an example really for you to see. You can take a screenshot later on, we can share the, the recording uh, uh, so that we, we make sure that you've got at least um, uh, about how it looks like. If any one of you guys who are participating really, um, uh, attending the webinar, feel free to ask your questions through in case uh, you've got some uh, by the end of the webinar or later on uh, over Facebook groups. Anyone something to ask about this plan before we move to something else, please? Okay, see so one of you um, has got a question. So what I'm going to do now is that I will start a, um, a demo session just to show you how do we record and or how do we keep track on our learning progress. So I'm just going to show one of uh, uh, a free application, uh, which is um, uh, downloadable from the App Store or from Google Play. Uh, you as a teacher, particularly this is an English language teaching application, which it's called PD Tracker. So I'm going to use my dummy user in order to share my screen, uh, and I can uh, you can see exactly what would happen or how do you use it? Uh, what are the OK elements you need to focus on in case you would like to start a CPD and you would like to make sure that you are recording uh, your colons and your your progress. Can you see my screen? Uh, yes, we do. Very well. So this is the application. Uh, the application is called um, PD Tracker. This is very much an application uh, for teachers, which means that you can find already existing activities uh, which can be part of any enrollment uh, program uh, related to CPD, or you can create an activities. I'll just give you an example of how I have used this application just some time ago, kind of one or two hours before the webinar. As you see, uh, in activities, you see that I've already one of the uh, CPD elements I have done. And if I click on view, it is going to show me the name of the course that I have already set myself. I have written it. It gives me the location. It gives you the name of the facilitator. It gives you the date of the activity and the duration. As you see here down, how many, or how many minutes, how many hours you need for this um, activity. And at the same time, uh, you will go, if you go to the description, you would see um, a kind of a brief description about this activity that you can do yourself. So as I said, you can create your own activity and you can give it a description, you can give it uh, the focus, you can give uh, different elements and information about it. Later on, uh, you see the focus. So what are the key areas I, I would like to focus in this activity, which is educational technology? 
Particularly, I would like to understand how the students learn when it comes to uh, when it comes to using technology. I would like to see strategies of teaching uh, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander students. For example, this is a, something very much in, in the Occidental side. But at the same time, as you see, even down, there is something how to use ICT safety. So even if you would like to use the um, uh, communication technology means in your classes, you need also to learn how to use it in a very safe way. And you need to, to be kind of responsible and make sure that your students are learning that um, ethically and in a very legal way. So um, uh, basically this is something, we can give a try even to create something um, together as a demo. Uh, for example here, you write your activity name, you want to become a head teacher, as something we've already seen a while ago in our plan. And supposing that um, the location, let's say Adrar, uh, I need to make a training in Adra, whatever. Uh, it's just uh, something like this. Name of the facilitator. If there is already a facilitator, if not, just write uh, Ryan or something like this. Here I set the date, supposing that by the 13th of November or the 12th, I need to start the activity. And here the time, I give it a time, five hours. And I click on next. So here, once I click on next, as I said, I need to put the description uh, of what my activity is. Just try my details. And here you see in reflection, it tells you, enter your reflections on this activity here. So what you learned and what was good, what you could be improved. So this is something you don't have to do now, but you can do it uh, later on once your activity uh, is done. So as I said, now now you can see things which are related to CPD. Uh, this is very important. You can choose any of the topics, any of the focus areas you would like to uh, develop. For example, I need to know how students and how they learn. So know students and how they learn, then I can see some elements on it. You see, I would like to understand how students learn. For example, I take this one. And I would like to understand as well the strategies to support a full participation of students with, with or without disability, right? And um, here I can just set uh, the uh, the proficiency. So if I am already, if I have some knowledge about that topic or no, if I am a proficient, if I am a highly accomplished person, if I am a leader in in that area. So here, just choose whatever you want. Here you can just set some uh, gallery, some picture just for a memory. And later on you save. So once you save your activity, you're going to see it already in this, um, in this uh, uh, PD tracker by Ari. See these colors in, in pink, blue, and green. It shows you how many hours you've already spent in learning, how many you see up on the left side. Uh, uh, there is kind of two activities which are open. And you have how many hours of learning? 17 PD tracker hours of learning. So here it tells you even during the time you are learning how many hours you've spent uh, while checking resources, while doing the learning activities, while putting into applications and stuff. And at the same time, it gives you as well an idea, an overview about how many activities uh, you have done so far. So as I said, this is just a, a brief, um, a brief uh, a demo for you uh, to see exactly how we can use a, a PD tracker. As I said, this is really um, uh, in Google, Google, okay, something like this. You can find it on Google Play. I don't know if you can still see my screen or no, but uh, you can find it, as I said, in Google Play, download it or you can find it uh, in your app store. Anyone else got a question before we come to the end of the webinar, please? Um, thank you, Hisham. Um, well, I have a question for all of you guys. I want that we benefit from each other before we end the webinar. Uh, so my question is, 
Uh, have you ever uh, attended an ELT event? I mean, a workshop or a conference? Um, if yes, I would kindly ask you to tell us where and when was it and what impact you think has it on your uh, professional development? I'm waiting for your answers, guys. You need to unmute the, the mic to speak. Hello, this is Saliha. Do you hear me? Yes, Saliha, please. Go ahead, please. Yeah. I attended two, um, two ELT conferences. The first was in 2016 in Oran, the international conference organized by the British Council. And the second was in Mustaganem, an ELT national conference. And they were beneficial sports. You learn a new thing, new things, and new techniques. You learn, I mean, your weaknesses. They are very beneficial. And you try then when you finish with the conference attendance, you try to apply what you have learned. And my, I think, the thing that I missed was the recording. I don't really pay attention to recording. I try to reflect upon, to observe, but they are all done. I mean. I mean, in my mind, they are not recorded. So what I missed and uh, still missing is the recording of all these, um, can say, professional development. I mean, you know, can say, attempts. So the thing I have learned most from this webinar is that I have to to record my uh, continuing development professional development uh, learnings. So thank you for your uh, information and for your uh, help. Thank you. Thank you, Saliha, for uh, sharing this. Um, thank you so much. I would like also to hear from, from Sumia, from Rima, Rosa, and even from Jalal. Yes, Rima, are you there? Rosa? Sumia? Hi, everyone. Hello. Can you hear me, Tisa? Yes, please go ahead, please. You need just to raise your voice a bit. Well, I guess we lost her. What about Rosa and Rima or Jalal? Hello, everyone. This is Jalal. Can you hear me, please? Yes, hello. Go ahead, please. Uh, well, just I prefer to let the others speak as they have like a direct uh, relation to the subject. She's ELT because as for most of you, maybe you don't know my current activity. So as Hisham do, does. Uh, actually, now I'm running a fashion boutique here in Dubai. So I just want to share my experience with the last workshop. Like you can say, it's a, it's a training program that I have attended. It was a five days uh, program. It's called leadership program. So it was more about uh, leadership, which I see that it has a direct uh, relation to what we are discussing right now. And uh, during this five days program, we have uh, taken like, so many case studies 
about some uh, business models, successful ones in different parts of the world. And just uh, speaking about the outcomes, uh, I could learn how to have a clear strategy uh, towards uh, running a business, whatever the volume of the business, whether it's a business. And so like two uh, crucial uh, points that we had to focus on. One of them is like setting a strategy, like taking into consideration all the circumstances around uh, that particular business. And uh, the second, and uh, maybe the most important one, is like the execution, is the correct execution, which all also applies into running a, uh, a uh, English classroom, which is like like using the right materials, using the right uh, like uh, aids in hand, and uh, throughout like a set time frame that you have to get a particular uh, result. So it's like, uh, let's say like there are two major points, which are first, uh, setting a clear strategy, and the more important one is the uh, execution, which I see like it's the hardest part, even in, in like in, in teaching, which is execution, like how to execute all what you have uh, obtained and put it into uh, practice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jalal. Thank you, Jalal. Thank you, Jalal. Thank you, Tisham, for uh, getting to the question. Just for the people, maybe to um, have an idea about why, why did I invite Jalal, despite the fact he's not um, uh, currently in the ELT sector. Jalal actually is, is a mentor in one of the uh, continual leadership development development programs I'm doing. So uh, his input and his experience, particularly in leadership and into uh, since English language teaching uh, worldwide, particularly in the organization, I execute my duties in is more than is, is kind of more than a uh, sense. Uh, uh, it's a business strategy. It's a business. Um, we focus on we just get it over uh, the normal uh, standard notion we know about. Uh, yeah. um, maybe we can take the last one to give us an answer. If yes. Uh, if not, I would really like to uh, make an end to the webinar since we are eight minutes over four. Hi again. Hello, go ahead. We do. Okay, great. I would like to share with you my uh, experience. I have attended um, a professional training program. Um, uh, uh, an intensive, it was an intensive training in teaching held on September 21st, 20, um, 2019 uh, at the World Learning Center at Bihadim. Uh, it was about uh, planning lessons, uh, how to deal with the uh, troublemakers, uh, students and I also um, have obtained my uh, TESOL TIFL cer certificate uh, of English. Uh, it was really uh, amazing and um, I've just uh, experienced in um, uh, how to deal with um, with different types of, uh, of learners, different teaching types, actually uh, several uh, several things, but the most important is um, to experience uh, teaching overseas. Inshallah, I will uh, I will uh, leave the experience and then share it with you soon. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, it, uh, I think that it's really time to wrap up the webinar. I would like to thank each one of you to have taken the time to make this event really happening, having joined us, having shared with us your experience. Um, um, hoping to meet you in our next webinar, which is going to be held next Thursday, same time, uh, 3 Central European time, 2 uh, PM Algerian time. Thank you, everyone. Have a great rest of the day. Thank you. Thank you so much, Hisham, and thank you for all of you guys. And